Hi everyone! Um, it's Saturday again. I can't believe how quickly these weeks go. I don't know, maybe it's a sign of getting old. Um, but they just disappear on me. However, this week I have been um, keeping my head down and doing some junk journaling for a change. And I've been trying to finish this project so I could show you the entire thing so you'd know what we were doing. But actually I'm probably only about three quarters of the way finished. But I think you'll still get the hang of what's occurring. This is the um, front page of the cover. It's only a little folio. It's not really a journal. Um, I just thought it might make or parts of it even might make a nice rack or something like that or a you know a little pick me up for somebody can i just say before i go any further every day this week i have been looking at this lovely little card i've got it sat up on my desk right in front of me in eye level and it's just beautiful it's so pretty and it's from Kerry roberts and she um sent me a collaborative journal page and loads and loads of lovely things in with it. Thank you, Kerry. It's so sweet of you. I really appreciate it all. And actually, she sent me a paper pad. This paper pad here. Um, and look at the papers in there. And it was actually this paper pad that set me off on the colours of this little folio that we're doing today. I really love this pad. I love this... Oh, look at that. It's so lovely. So, you know, watch out because this will, if you find this anywhere, I don't know where Carrie got it, but if you find it anywhere, buy it because it will be featuring in um, something soon, I imagine. I can't keep my hands off it. So thank you, Carrie. I'll put that back up there where it belongs. Uh, so this is today's um, project. Uh, this is the front, what will be the front cover my bangles are a bangling uh, and it's got this little envelope you've seen me do this sort of thing before little envelope here um, some trim that um, I think Regina sent me and it's beautiful thank you for that and a little tag in there and then the back's covered over there's a bit of lace down there and this um, this is an envelope but I've actually cut the top off and I've just sort of decorated the front very very lightly little butterfly and two little die cuts um a die cut uh it, it's a tim holtz die die cut called crochet and hilda was kind enough to send me that from my amazon wish list so thank you to hilda and then it's got this big tag in the front um which goes into the envelope because i've chopped the side off the envelope so that's that um that's some silk that Mr. Fixit found at a car boot that I just ripped up and used for that. Um, I like that. And a doily. I had to turn the whole house upside down to find those doilies because I knew I had some in that colour. And I couldn't find them, but eventually I got that. So that's it fine. Says that paper from the work oh, does it? Thanks, UK. Hilda. Thank you. Um, well, you know... I advise you to go and get one before they sell out. Um, it will be featuring. So this is the kind of inside. The back, um, I'm afraid I've failed you on the back. It hasn't been finished yet. Um, but this is the inside. This is one page that's going to... You'll see that I'm actually working on white, which is uh, unusual for me. I normally work on cream, coffee stain paper, uh, you know, creamy sort of colours. This is all on white. I've, I've printed on white and I've left it white uh, because these are papers from chapter one. Uh, chapter one. And that's how they come out. Now then, you could print those onto coffee stained paper. And then, of course, there would be cream. I like this kind of naivety, this simplicity that you get with the white and it's nice and bright and clean looking. I just like it. So I've left it on, printed it on white and left it on white. Um, and then this page, it's got these four tags in. Um, I've gone a bit embossing crazy. <laughs> I've got a new embossing folder and it's lovely. It's butterflies. Uh, and I just <laughs> loved it. So I've gone a bit loop the loop with um, my embossing. This is just tracing paper. Um that I've embossed and stuck it over a tag and 
um, just put some paper on the back and just put some, um, went through a stencil with the uh, ink, the light coloured ink. So that's those two. And then these two at the back, um, they haven't got uh, embossed tracing paper on. They just printed out and embossed and then covered on the back. And this is an envelope here that uh, I've, I've made. I've made from a template, which we'll come to later. It plays a role later on. Um, small die cuts, this lovely uh, butterfly here. Um, bit of ribbon, lace, blah, blah, and they all fit in there. So that's a relatively easy page. Well, it is an easy page. It's not a complicated page. Uh, and they all fit in there, and I think they look quite pretty. I think this white does lend itself more to prettiness, you know, than than cream. Cream lends itself to shabby, without a doubt. But I think if you want, like, mega um, pretty overload, then printing on whites might, might be the way forward. So that brings us to this. Now, in the middle here, I've specifically torn, um, not torn, I've got it. Because in the middle, we are going to have a vellum pocket um, and it'll go like that cut along the top and you know sewn, sewn around and I'll just splay those bits out put them in there and you'll say law I'll explain it all to you law work don't worry um, but that's why that's in two halves <laughs> uh, but today we're going to concentrate on this page so I'll pop the rest of that away I don't know if we'll get through all of this page today I don't think so, but um, we'll see. So it's got some quite nice things in this pocket, but I want to draw your attention, first of all, to the pocket itself. It's um, a lilac-y sort of coloured card. It's got a ribbon tie down there. It's got a lace overlay. This white is lace. Um, and then it's got this bit of prettiness going on there. And then inside it, it's got a, well, it's not vellum, is it vellum? Yeah, I think that was vellum that I had just to hand in my stash. And I made a little envelope out of it, as you can see. And it's just got a little um, card inside. You can put as many cards in there as, as you want or not. Um, but I, I wanted the white from the card showing through so you could see the vellum. And it's just simply decorated, but we'll come to that. And that fits into the pocket. Uh, we've also got this tag, which is a um, kind of double tag, swivels round, so you could write on there if you really wanted to. Um, I've decorated it. I've left the centre fairly, well it is, um, fairly empty of decoration. Embellishment. Eh? Embellishment, yeah. I was just going to forget the word. Uh, and then a bit of ribbon, bit of butterflyage, bit of trimmage, and this big blousy um, brad which I put through before I put the backing paper on so you don't see it and it's good if you remember to do that the first time <laughs> saying nothing I hate to see brads on the you know on the wrong side when you could have really easily um, hidden them disguised them and then we've got this which well, was about six months ago I think absolutely everywhere on um, YouTube everyone was doing these and I didn't do one then because <laughs> I thought everyone was doing them I don't want to do them but I just I was looking for something some little sort of in, inclusion if you like that we could put in there um, that wasn't too fat that was pretty and this kind of came to me so I've made it in pink this one uh, the tag is in lilac and the um, envelope is yellow now, if you're doing this, you might find that you want to do them all the same colour so they all coordinate. Um, I just get bored if I'm doing things the same colour. That's really the bottom line. So, uh, you know, we've got three colours here. Um, and we'll, we'll plough on with this one and see how far we get, if we can get... No, well, let's make the pocket first. That's the thing to do. I'll show you this while I've got it out. I've just got it held together with a piece of um, satin ribbon. Sari silk would be ideal if you had some in the right colour. I didn't, so uh, it's got satin ribbon on it. So this is the front. 
it's uh, just got lace down there and there this is a pocket with a little uh, card in it and then this flips up and I don't know what on earth made me do this in yellow <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> What was going on in my head exactly? It should have been pink, but it's yellow. And it's just extra journaling space really in there. It's just a little trick thing. Um, and that fits in there to hold that down. And this is just a collage. It's got no other purpose. This is a little bit of gauze behind there. I'll just show you that. And you'll see you don't need very much gauze at all. You need tiny minuscule amounts and <laughs> so if you know anyone who's bought a roll <laughs> that's large it'll see you out i'm quite sure mentioning no names hilda <laughs> the gauze that i use um this is what it looks like that'll see me through several projects this piece here um i don't know where i've put it it's down here somewhere I think I don't know it's just a it's a bandage is all it is and I buy it from Boots the Chemist gauze bandage it's called I think it's a fiver or something like that and really it will um oh Mr Fix it's found it good lad this is what it looks like comes like this um and it's <laughs> That's the size of it, okay? <laughs> it's not massive. And it just sort of opens up and opens up and opens up. And you eventually end up, that's double thickness there still. So you can open that again. And you get loads, you really do. So if you, you know, if you junk journal with a friend or whatever, buy one between you because it'll, it'll last for yonks. And the other thing you can do with it, if you want to, is um, if you get your ink pads, um and just on a piece of greaseproof paper or something don't do it on your ch uh, chopping board <laughs> on your best board um put the ink down on the on the board spray it with uh, water to dilute it then just put this into that you'll end up with whatever color gauze that you want for your project um so there you go you'll never be short of colored gauze anyway that's just a little aside uh, so that's that pocket, that's that's got lace down there, lace down there, it opens open, it's got this little side pocket in there, backed, tiny bit of embellishment, and this is the other side, it's got a, a little journaling card on there, these are from the chapter one um, kit, and they're, they're lovely, I love that, I really do, um, and the same thing, this pocket with a little bit of embellishment really, that's all that that is um and that opens up now i haven't put anything in there but i think you definitely could get away with putting another little bit of journaling paper in there i think that would be um i'd, I'd like that better actually if it had that and then this pocket is this way on and it's just got a big journaling card but because i wanted to use the same paper as i've used for this I needed to set it off somehow, so I've put it onto pink card just to give it that little outline around the edge so it stands out when it's in the pocket, doesn't just get lost. And then it's just pretty there, so as when you do that, it looks pretty. So that's that one anyway. So now you know what we're, what's coming, what's ahead. That one I've explained to you, that one I've explained to you. So really it's just this. So you need some of the paper. And this is what it looks like. It's collage, what they call collage paper. Um, and I need it to be the same size as that really would be good. So it's just, yeah, it's got this border around it. So it's at the edge of the border. And it comes in to there. And there. So just cut that off first off. So, who's with us? Oh, loads. Loads. Yes, please. Yeah. Pat. Hi, Pat. Desiree. Hello, Desiree. Hilda. Hilda. Green. 
Corin, hi, happy to see uh, you. Helen. Hiya. Uh, Shimri. Hiya. <laughs> Martha. Wow, Martha. Martha Ludma. I'm not recognising your name, Martha. Welcome uh, along. Deborah. Hi, Deborah. Sammy. Sammy. Jen. Goodness, Jen, hello. Flo. Hi, Flo. Um, me. <laughs> hello, Mr. F. Roz. Hi, Roz. Uh, Donna. Blimey, hi Donna. Donna Ann, Miranda Holmes. Hi Janet, hi Miranda. Uh, Debbie Bankston. Hi Debbie. Uh, Regina. Hi Regina. Um, I don't know if I missed anybody. Well, sorry if we've missed anybody. Give us a shout. Oh, Deborah. Deborah. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry if we've missed anybody out. And if anybody's watching and you're not on live chat, hiya, you're very, very welcome. Uh, if you want to join live chat, please do. You might find you get a better viewing experience. If you don't, I don't know. It's Some people like it, some people don't. Just the way it is. But you're all very welcome. Of course you are. Lovely to have you with us. Right, so we've squared that up pretty much. Um, now then, the pocket, the existing pocket that I have, although it's really pretty, it doesn't actually perform the function that I wanted it to. It doesn't keep all my bits. <laughs> it doesn't keep all my bits in tightly enough. <laughs> the story of my life. It's the story of my life. Um, and and they're a bit they're a bit floppy, and I and I don't want that. So. Um, I mean, it's nice, but it's just, I could improve on it. So, Nathan hi, Candice. Nathania. Hi, Nathania. Uh, Candice. Yeah. Andrew says hi. Hi. So, what I want to do is bring this pocket up a little bit. Bring it to about there. And still about there, I think. Um, but just give it a bit more oomph at the bottom. That's um, what I'm planning to do. So I want to allow sort of half an inch around on all sides so I can um, make a gusset, guys. You know what's coming. It's a gusset. Um, I'm just going to mark the edge of the paper. Bigger gussets. Bigger gussets. So all a lot of it does. So I want it to come up to there so there'll be an extra half inch. Right. So... I haven't marked how far up I want it. Uh, Debbie says good. she can't stay. She's got to run to the Piggly Wiggly for a few groceries. The Piggly Wiggly? Yep. Uh, and Jen says, I think I missed where this paper digital came from. It came from chapter one, um, Jen. I think it was in English £3.44. So it's a bit dearer than the um, journal paper e stuff we were using. And, but the reason that I bought it, well, I bought it because I loved it. Um, I mean, some, I'll just give you a quick flick through. Some of them are beautiful. Oh, there's an, Mr. Fixit, just before we came on there, decided that he was going to drop a whole box of machine sewing needles. <laughs> he wasn't best pleased. I've printed these out on A3, but there's no need for you to print them out on A3. I haven't used, I don't think, any of the ones I've printed out in A3. And if you want something bigger, just put it on A4 and, and put it into Word and make it and expand it. But the papers are gorgeous. They're really up my street. Chapter one on Etsy, I think. Chapter one on Etsy, yeah. Chapter one papers, I think they're called, actually. To give them the full title. Get a link now. And I believe that they are British, which is unusual. Uh, look at that vellum. <laughs> oh dear, it's so pretty that, isn't it? Um, that's what's left. But there, you know, there's another piece of it. This is, it's beautiful. The papers are beautiful. And they're kind of directional, so you're not stuck with just a straight up and down. And it comes with tags as well, which I like. This is my first attempt at doing that other one. <laughs> Didn't work. Um, so yeah, yeah, there's the sheet of the tags. 
as I say, this one's on A3, but um, it's not necessary. But aren't they lovely? They really are. And we're back to A4 size now. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I really like these tags here that have got the lines on for writing. Um, I particularly like those. But I think they do two wildflower things, and I think these are called wildflower moments. But I may, before too much longer, have to buy the other wildflower one as well. Yay! Yikes. Honestly, that blooming Etsy, it'll have me bankrupt. I tell you. So I'm, I'm going to make some marks here of uh, where I want things. I want that up to there. That's the corner. Right, so I've kind of got some marks made here. So, um, I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to need a bigger ruler than that. So if that's where I want the edge to be, I want to add on half an inch. Oh, no, I don't. You know the way I normally add on half an inch um, to fold over? Well, on this occasion, I don't. Because I'm putting ribbon through it, if you add an extra half inch, it just becomes too thick, especially with the lace on. So I just actually want to cut it there, where my marks are. Like that. I don't think we can be too far out at this stage. So that's probably waste as far as this project goes. So let's have a look. Shaz is Hi Shaz, hope you're all right. Um, yeah, that's good. I need to score half an inch along there. That's the line of the edge of my paper, so I'll put my half inch on it. There. Right, so now I should be able to score, I think, tuck of the rulers. Um, one thing I would say to you now, while I just remember to say it, is uh, scoring vellum's not a really good idea because it's so light it moves away and you don't really see it moving away from that edge. So you end up with wonky lines. So you're better off to do it by hand if you can. It's just what I've discovered, but you know, you may, you may know better. So that's that. Score this one. Scoring them on the half inch, and I'm hoping that it's going to be accurate, but time will tell. So let's have a look on this piece of paper that we've got and just check that that line. God, you think I'd done this before? Which I have, I've been doing this all week, so I wouldn't let the side down. So with the corners, you know what to do. You cut into where that intersection is, then turn your scissors to a more acute angle and cut off like that. I was very interested when I put a post up in the group. If you're watching this and you're not a member of our Facebook group, we have a really nice Facebook group called um, Jump Journal Group, imaginatively. Um, we'd love to see you on there. It would be really nice if you could join us. Um, and I put a post up about who was, who was a newbie or who counted themselves as a newbie. Because I had seen posts going past of people saying, oh, newbie here or whatever. And honestly, I just couldn't hold all the names in my head. So I just asked on a post if you would put below if you were a newbie. And I was quite amazed, really, how many real newbies that we have. Which is excellent. Welcome to this wonderful craft of junk journaling. It has a wonderful community around it. Really nice people lovely caring community um and 
you, you know, you're welcome to it and you're welcome to any knowledge that I have that I can share with you. If you need to know anything, please ask on the group. People will help. I will help if I can. Um, or ask, you know, during the um, this, the YouTube live, which we have every Saturday and Sunday, sometimes in the week as well. Um, but I'm trying to make things kind of newbie friendly, really, is what I'm trying to say to you. So this is a bit of a twist on the side of a pocket, really. Um, let me just let me just fold those in so I can see where my pocket begins and ends. So I've scored that. I'm now folding it in, and this is called a bone folder. It's made of plastic. I think originally they were made of bone which is how they got the name. Um, so just take your time and score it on the mark that you've scored. If you haven't got a scoreboard yet, don't worry. You know, it's not essential. What you can do is just put your, put your ruler on, whatever ruler you have, where you want to make your mark, and just literally run down it. With, with that and you will get a score mark so you know I mean we have all these tools and things half the time I think we have them because well we just like buying them I don't think that all of them are strictly necessary Candice says she's a real newbie ah oh, well welcome along my dear you'll love it right so there we are this is the the edge of the pocket going that way so I'm now looking at the back of it and I want to make some marks on it where I'm going to put my holes to bring my ribbon through. So what have we got there? Nearly on inches there. So I'm just going to bring it in a little way that far. I'm doing this by eye but that looks like about half an inch to me. And let's see if we can just line that up. So here I'm nearly on an inch and there I'm nearly on an inch. That's as accurate as I'm going to get. So I mark the, I mark the, I'm marking at the inches. But then I need to come back and check. So my ribbon's going to come out there, in there, out there, out, all for out. Uh, out there, in there, out there. Yeah, so that's going to work. That means I'm going to have two outies. So I'm going to, have to be able to tie a ribbon on the on the other side. So I'll just make some holes in there. I'll have to recut them once I put the lace on. But um, my crocodile doesn't like cutting through lace. So I'd like to have something. And, and I'm going to use the bigger of the holes available to me with this. A little handheld a hole punch will work every bit as well, guys. I think Mr. Fix it bought me this because it was uh, on eBay and it was going cheap. It's not necessary for life. As a junk journaler, I mean, it's obviously not necessary for ordinary life. <laughs> Full stop. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is just pop the lace um the overlay that i had see it's just it's really really pretty and it does add to it and yesterday when i did it i was exclaiming about the wedding cake confection that i'd made and i, I did it does look a bit wedding cakey and might be a bit schmaltzy for for you guys i don't know it might be might not be so here's the lace i buy it off ebay uh i buy it by the meter it's much cheaper that way, works out about £3.50 a metre, so it's not really, really expensive, but I do like it, I use it a lot, I use it in my boho journals quite a bit. So, um, that's going to go like that. So I'm just going to put the top edge on first. Linny says hello. Linny Vons 2, Vones 2. Lynn Yvonne 2. <laughs> Let's try that. Yeah, why not? Lynn 
Lin 2.0. <laughs> no, there's Yvonne in there somewhere. <laughs> right, so I'm going to use um, Fabri-Tac for this. Anything that involves any sort of fabric, I'm in there with the Fabri-Tac and I really need to thank Hilda for that. She has um, built up my supplies of this, so I'm not going to run out for some time. Also, coupled with the fact that I save it like anything and <laughs> really, really don't use it hardly at all because I'm so aware of how expensive it is. So I'm folding that over and it's Fabri-Tac does dry quickly, but it's not instant grab. So you just have to hold it just for a minute, a second or two, just till it, um, till it sticks. So there we are. So I've folded that, but not down as far as those holes, because then I'd never get through them, frankly. Right, so next thing is the sides. So that's going to get folded over there. So I need to trim a bit of this off. And stick that. Yep. It's quite a nice idea this putting a ribbon down the front, the leading edge, should I say, of the pocket. I've done it. Do you know what's now when inches are part of your holes? An inch. Just to make it easy, Regina, one inch. <laughs> My brain doesn't do anything much more complicated than that. So that's that on there. You see when you fold it over, you've got this excess. It's no use to anybody, so just trim that off like so. And you can actually, you know, now you've got it stuck down, you can trim this excess off as well. It's not needed. Let's make a tidy job of it. Like so. Get rid of that. Lynn says hello. Hi Lynn, how are you? Nice to see you. I'm glad you're feeling that you want to watch us. Make fools of ourselves largely, I think. Uh, and this side here as well. Oh, I should have put the lid on my fabric tag. I know you're screaming. Oh, that's the wrong side. I know you're screaming at me, Hilda. Put the lid on your fabric tag. I can hear you from here. <laughs> So that needs to go like that, and it's this outside edge that we need to glue. Maureen says, uh, afterwards all. Afterwards? <laughs> Are we having an apre video party? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good plan. <laughs> We're having the spell check. <laughs> Nightmares. <laughs> Hello, Maureen. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. We're just laughing. We're not laughing at you. Spell check does come out with some absolute crackers, doesn't it? I mean, some of the things that it suggests that you might want to be saying. <laughs> Don't you know me at all? And, and Pat says that Elder needs to buy one metre of the lace. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well done, Hilda. And um, Pat, yeah, you're right. Yeah. We'll just help her out with that one. One metre, Hilda, is sufficient. I use it quite often, this lace, I must be honest. But I, I just buy one, one metre at a time. Um, it's, it's enough. I think the postage on eBay is free for it anyway, so I wouldn't gain anything by having it hanging around. So now we need to fold this in. I'm sorry for you newbies that this is a kind of complicated pocket to start off with, really. Um, so let's just let's just trim around there where we've trimmed the the cardboard too with the trim the lace as well, or we'll end up in a bit of a mess. Oh, that's Mr. Fix it putting the kettle on. Excellent. So I'm just making the lace the same shape as the 
card but it's easier to do it once you've got a couple of edges on because it's a bit slippy you know it slides around this lace so there we are so you can see well I don't know if you can but it, I actually sort of need to pull that a little bit when I put this bottom edge on because otherwise it was going to be baggy so let's put the uh, glue on here and then we'll just ease it should we say ease that's better than pull isn't it we'll ease it god if ever the form of Fabri-Tac um, fan club I'm there <laughs> I'm the torch carrier so I'm just pulling that as I stick it just slightly I don't want to distort it but I don't I don't want baggy lace who wants baggy lace eh not me so that's that so yeah that's nice and taut lovely 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 so I know I know that everybody who watches me all the time knows what I'm gonna say now but really what you need to do is fold your inside bits fold your side bits in and then fold your bottom over the bottom <laughs> every time I say that Mr Fix it laughs and every time he laughs it makes me laugh so I'm sorry you're gonna have to just you know get, get used to this childish humor <laughs> um so you need a little bit of glue there a little bit of glue there fold your bottom up onto there and just hold it for a couple of seconds whilst the Fabri-Tac does its magic and you can see we've got the that's the back of our pocket and I'll show you in a minute why we're doing all this foldy business and um, why you don't just stick a piece of card straight down onto a bit of paper for a pocket come on Fabri-Tac I've just been extolling your virtues So it sinks in through the lace, I think, is its, is its problem. I have got clothes pegs, but I'm quite sure that's going to stick in a second. Put the lid on there. Let's get shaped to that. No, I don't. Right, so I'm going to get some pegs because I can't hold that. These are ordinary clothes pegs. I'm sure you can get jazzy ones, but these do the job. Right, so that's that. We're there. So now I need to get... Oh, thank you so much. Just pop it there. Lovely. Thank you. Um, I'm, a digestive. Are you having a digestive? Yeah. Why not? So I'm just going in through where the holes are. And I might do it from this side actually because they're a bit easier to see. This crocodile doesn't really like cutting through this lace. So I'm going to give each one two sharp wraps and see if I can uh, get it through. You might have a, a sharper thingy than me, I don't know. We'll get there in the end, don't worry. I mean, you can do this on straight pockets as well. I've done it on loads of straight pockets. Um, just so happened this one's diagonal, <laughs> just to make it more complicated. But I think it's a very effective, pretty thing. Um, yeah, I think that's all right. I think we can get in there with our uh, scissors. I'm sure I've got some little scissors somewhere. Yeah, well, never mind. And just trim off those excess bits of lace. Of course, as I say, you might not need to do this. Yours might just go straight whizzing through. I think that's okay. Right, so I use this colour lace. Um, it would be not, it would be very nice with white if I think if you had white I didn't have white so um, I couldn't use it can't use it if you haven't got it can you 
So, oh, there's my little scissors. So you just push, thread this. This is what you do, you thread it. If you get near the end, it goes in easier. More haste, less speed is definitely true, isn't it? Try and get it lying flat like that. This narrow, I don't, it's, I'd say it's called Finning Lace uh, ribbon, and it works a, a treat, I think. That's still got a bit of lace left on it, but we're all right. So make sure you've got it lying flat, and then you need to gauge how much you might need to tie a bow. Which, I don't know. I don't know, that's probably enough, isn't it? And then cut that off there. And we'll glue that down with a bit of fabric tank. So just to assist that sticking, because it doesn't seem to want to stick, and it didn't want to stick yesterday either. So, uh, And then you do the same from the other side. So what you really need to make sure is that you've got enough holes so it comes up, down and up, so you can tie your bow here. Because you don't want that one going down, if you know what I mean. If that one's going down, you've got nothing to tie this other end with. Oh, it's complicated, isn't it? It's not really complicated. When you're doing it yourself, it will make much more sense to you, I'm sure. Is everybody following along? Yes. Regina was just saying she tried to thin down the tacky glue. Oh, yeah. Um, but I think she must have used too much water in it. Uh, really so, so we might do a little video it'll only be a couple of minutes just to yeah show the amounts that we put in yeah definitely well i don't i don't know anything about that that's not my department i just say mr fix it my glue's running out and he goes what again so that's kind of how it works in this house so i'll just cut that off uh about there that will have stuck by now for sure and i'll just put a little bit of I protect there on that on this bit of ribbon. Put the ribbon down, get the peg. There we go. So that should be stuck as well. Yeah, that's stuck. So lid on the fabric tank. Right, okay, let's see if we can tie a ribbon with what we've got here. If we can't, it's a bit bad because I've cut the ends off. And your finger. <gasps> no, it should be all right, I think. Thank you. I know I look weird tying bows. It's because I'm left-handed. Jen says she might have to be lazy and run the lace across the top and then make a bow and stick it on. <laughs> and what's wrong with that? Nothing. Oh, come on. I'm just going to make a giant one first. Yeah, like that. And then make it a little bit smaller. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, Jen, actually. I mean, I've spent three quarters of an hour making a pocket. <laughs> oh, glory. So you just cut those off, cut them uh, on the diagonal, it stops them fraying. Save your bits of lace, please. Please don't throw them away your trim. Right, so that's that. Hopefully they'll stick. Um, and then we can get on with sticking it onto our piece of uh, paper. Hopefully that fits. Yes, look at that. So shall we see if that's stuck? Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say it has. Look at me, putting my things away as I use them. Heaven's sake. 
I wouldn't believe it. Right, so plenty of um, adhesive down here. This is a big pocket and it's going to hold quite a lot of stuff. So it needs all the help you can give it. I love white lace over things. I, I really love the effect of it. With your own white lace, you can sort of make any colour you like. So you just put whatever card you want behind it. So that's really generous amounts there of um, glue. So line up your corners, line up your edges. And there we are. So that's a pretty start to that. So you can leave it like that if you want. As Jen says, <laughs> with a genius idea, <laughs> stick a bow on it. <laughs> I think that's just... It's genius, Jen. Uh, Colleen says... Uh... That's why it looks so natural to me. She's left-handed. Ah, uh, right, yeah. And she's always trying to work out the right way to do things when she watches other people. I know, absolutely. I don't know if you've come across a lady called Andrea from Marty Mays. Um, even if you don't like the style of things that she does, you, you know, I mean, she's a fantastic artist and a lovely lady. But she's so good to watch because she's left-handed. And she approaches things the way I do. And I guess you'd be the same, Corinne. Um, it's just nice to see people doing things um, the opposite way around. Excuse me, we'll have a little drink of my coffee. Right, so on this one we've got this decoration and I do really like that actually. I like the blue and the lilac together. So this is the lace that I'm going to use. I've had it quite a long time now. Um, it's one of those laces I can never quite work out where I should be using it but so I want a bit well this is the ribbon that I'm going to put on the top and it's just a satin ribbon and I got it from AliExpress I think there was five or six colors of it and I think I got a meter of each and it was really next to nothing um, but it's got butterflies and it's got flowers on and it's I think it fits our brief perfectly and it's got the word darling there which is darling so i would like a piece of lace cool. darling that i can get that whole flower on there so i need to cut it about there let's just check this out I want it from there to there. Right, so what I'm going to suggest is another kind of fiddle-faddle thing, really. But it does help matters, if I could find it. Can you see my double-sided tape anywhere? Anywhere at all. Oh, yeah, here it is. I'm nearly out of it. Look at that. It's sad. Fortunately, I have more in the cupboard. So, um, I want it to there. Just kind of, just above where that V is. So I'm going to turn it over and on the wrong side, I'm going to stick some of my double-sided tape. And cut it off flush with the side. Now I've still got a bit on the top from where I did this the last time. And then if you cut through that, you don't get any of those wispy ends on this crocheted lace that you get and I cannot bear them they look really untidy as far as I'm concerned so that's um, how I get round that by putting double sided top and bottom and then when you stick it on um, it's the nice they don't fray because you know I, I, it's more than I can stand honestly I, I think I'm not, I'm not belittling anyone that has OCD I appreciate that it is a very very serious illness um but you know I, I could be classed as being slightly ocd about my junk journals so i just need to peel that off peel this other one it's a very thin um bit at this end but i think it'll do the job 
peel the backing off. Well, I'd like to peel the backing off. Yeah, there we go. And stick that. I'm going to remove that because I need to see where I need to stick that. And Deborah says, what a great tip, and Sammy Jones says she would have never thought of that. I aim to teach. <laughs> I don't know, teach you what, but that's what I aim to do. So there we are, that's that on there, and it's stuck on by that um, double-sided. In an ideal world, I think I should have gone down the sides there, but uh, I, I forgot. That's the bottom line, I forgot. Um, and then this goes on there. It's got a right way and a wrong way. I want to use that with a darling on it. Oh, that one says darling too. Oh, that's nice. So I can use that. So I'll just... Cut that across there. And across there. I don't know if this is going to be a very free ribbon or not. Is that too long? just marginally too long i'm just going to do that same trick again because i don't trust this ribbon not to fray and i i, I wouldn't like that so I'll just put a piece along there i've taken my anti-shake <laughs> tablets but they obviously aren't doing a very good job today so i'm sorry Put on the rather bit on the shaky side. And I am for the for, the, for this just going to put the smallest bit uh, in the middle. Because if you put a large bit uh, right down the middle, it kind of distorts the satin. So I'm just going to put a little bit down there. And then I'm going to cut through that. But I want to hang on to that word that says darling. And same at the bottom. And then we just need to remove the, the backing. I've got super strength um, double sided. Uh, it, it's 3M industrial <laughs> double sided. And it's excellent, but sometimes the backing just does not want to leave. It's behaving itself today, see, because I told you about it. So let's just pop that on there, down a wee touch. Just about there. So that's that's on, it's not going to fray, it's going to be, and if we press that right through, we might get some of the double sidedness sticking there ribbon down so that's pretty i think i think that's a nice addition you know there are so many variations of this that you could do the color of the card the color of the lace the color of the ribbon the color of this everything is subject to you changing it to your taste it really 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 is now i have also added onto there a little butterfly because that's kind of become the theme really for this um this old journal of mine and I'm sure I laid them out when I was getting prepared oh is there uh, yeah that wasn't the one I was going to use there's a purple one somewhere now here we are here it is um that's for another page so that's a little purple one and I like that because it's bringing through this lilac color it's bringing it all up to match um, so just just where you cut it out there's a kind of white edge and I can't be doing with it so I'm just going to go around it with a bit of ink uh, I don't want to distress it that's not the name of the game I just want to get rid of that white edge that you get when you fussy cut things and I'm going to stick that on there so is everybody all right? Everybody understanding what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, etc. 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 Shout now. If you're not, there is absolutely no shame in it. I'm not the world's best teacher. So I'm happy to go over anything um, that you want clarification on. I might not know the answer like. 
It's very probable. But feel free to ask away. So that's going right on the corner there. So you can still see that lovely ribbon. Just press that down. I think it would be all right with these. We can probably put the, the pegs away now. Get the full impact of that pretty, pretty page. It's pretty before we start putting anything on it. So I just want to add... Um, a little uh, crystal in the middle of that. God, I take this off 20 times a day and it just pops off. Um, I've got two sizes of actual crystals. One that's relatively small, that size, and one that's a bit larger, but I like I'd rather err on the side of small. I know, Jen. I know. <laughs> um, Jen likes a bling. But, you know, it's a, I'm putting bling on. It's just a question of size. <laughs> so I'm using this. I'll tell you about it in a second. This E6000 glue, which in this country is very, very, very difficult to get hold of. But... AliExpress sell it, so order it from Ali. So that's that. It doesn't need much downward pressure because if you push it downwards, even although it's the merest dot of glue, the glue comes out and it comes up the sides and it stops some of that real crystal shine. So just drop it on there, let gravity do its thing and it, in the fullness of time it will dry. But I don't know if you can see how sparkly that is. It's... It's crystal sparkly. It's beautiful. So that's kind of that. That's the E6000, which is the, the glue for sticking on uh, crystals that aren't hotfix. Hotfix ones are different. We've covered them before. Right, so we have a pocket. Excellent. Making progress. So let's move on to the vellum envelope. So I have um, templates. In fact, I've got a whole series of templates, actually. Um, I just keep putting them into Word, shrinking them down, printing them out, shrink them down, print them out. So I've got a series of templates ready for whatever excitement <laughs> I'm going to do that day. Um, if you want, if you want me to, I'll put one of the templates up and then you can do the same. Make it, shrink it, whatever. Um, the template that I used for this is... Let's have a look. That one? No. Yeah, this one you can see, that's the size of it. Okay. So I'm going to put this back in my templates box because otherwise they get lost. So you can see it's the one that the sides fold up. This is the bottom and that folds up and then this is the top flap. Now then, vellum. I must admit, I hadn't really strayed into the world of vellum. And the lovely, lovely Hilda bought me some Tim Holtz vellum from my Amazon wish list. And I've had it a little while now. I can only thank her, you know, thank you. That's all I can say. Um, and I didn't want to use it because it is just so beautiful. So <laughs> I did use it, but for one of my projects. But in the interim, I, I was saying to Mr. Fix it, you know, if you had a piece of tracing paper, do you think it would print on an inkjet paper? And... A stock answer to most things is, I don't know. <laughs> so I said, well, let's try it. You know, unless we try it, we'll never know. So we did. We printed it. Um, I thought I brought it over here. Yeah. So this is what we used. Pucka pad, tracing pad, A4. The A4 is just the size. It's just a common um, copy paper size. Uh, and there's 40 sheets. They hinge down at the bottom. And this particular pad came from our local pound shop. So, you know, 40 sheets for a quid. 
was worth an experiment. So we printed it out and it was just gorgeous. And then, <laughs> then I thought, well, we'll emboss it with my new embossing folder because I've got this A4 embossing folder. And I'm just I'm just embossing everything at the moment. So that's um, that's how that turned out. That is no more than tracing paper that's been printed on an inkjet, and then run through the Sizzix uh, with an embossing folder. You don't need to emboss it. You definitely don't. It'll look really every bit as nice, I think, not embossed. So anyway, let's make the uh, let's cut the envelope out. I'm going to do it on this side because the other bit's got sharpy sort of bits on it. Natalie says hi. Hi Natalie. Really nice to have you with us. Hope you haven't been working too hard again. Natalie is always working. But she generally manages to sneak us on even if she is working. Which is good. Uh, Jen says she tried embossing on vellum, but it ends up cutting the vellum. What's the secret? Mm. It sounds like you've got too much pressure going going on in your um, your cutting machine. Yeah, you might need to um, put you, different shims yeah. in or different cutting plates. Yeah. Some people, uh, and not with a tracing paper, obviously. But some people, when they emboss, they get their bit of card or whatever, paper or whatever, and spray it down with water. And it just makes it a bit more supple. So it actually yields to the embossing plate rather than you cutting it. That might be worth a try for you. I mean, it's obviously not going to be any good on tracing paper. Uh, and Pat says, where did you get the A4 embossing folder? From the range. Uh, it's a size six one, is it? I think. We get the. I do not know. Or is it an X cut? I don't know. So let's cut out around there. I don't know if you can see that. I've, I've got the template down here anyway, so I'm just going to cut it out. Yeah, I mean, I, I can see what you mean. There's bits of this around the edge that are that want to uh, fall off. Nothing tragic. So I reckon tomorrow we'll just carry on from wherever we get to today. Um, I, I'd really like to finish this this weekend, but I think I just think it's not going to happen. I'm getting, you know, I'm getting too adventurous. I don't want to do too much. I just want. I like the idea of you having nice little projects to do. Oh, have you got it? There it is. Thank you. Yeah. Um, let's go down. There we are. It says X cut lifetime guarantee. Nine ninety nine. And that's embossing the folder embossing folder A4. And that's it. Pretty nice, isn't it? Mr. Fixit has been experimenting this morning, as he's wont to do, with trying and, and maybe some of you know more about this than, than we do. We just we've just been, as I say, playing around this morning. Uh, trying to colour the the top could you pass me those samples, please? Like the tops of the embossed bits, sort of thing. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. I'm talking double dutch at the minute. Let me just cut out this template. Right. Well, I'm going to keep. I'm going to keep that. I'm going to keep these all. They're too nice. Yeah, the today. You know, when you emboss, obviously. I mean, the thing about it is, you're adding dimensionality to the thing. Um, so he wondered what would happen if you just caught the top of it, and that's like the green there. Just a green acrylic paint. It's just a green acrylic paint. And then he wondered what would happen if he just caught the back of it. 
So that's just an experiment, but look at this piece here. He's used a gold, oh, I don't think you're picking that up, what a shame. A gold ink pad, and it's picked up all the top of the relief. And then on the back, he's used a sort of um, lavender blue. And that is really, really pretty. There you go, you can see the glisten there. It's really pretty, and there's definitely mileage to be had in that. Definitely. But in the interim, here we are. So this is going to be the outside because that means then I can get my tags in without it catching on the, the rough bit. So I'm just going to fold those over like so. I think that's all right. And that one. Oops. Oopsie. Oops. 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 That's all right, I think. And then you fold that one up. So it's just a fairly straightforward, simple envelope, this one. Candy says you can ink the embossing folder. Oh. If you ink the raised size of the embossing folder and then run it through, it gives a beautiful effect. Oh, Candice, thank you. Yeah, that that sounds working. good. And then what? You just wash your embossing folder after, I guess. I guess. And most of the inks probably come off, to be honest. Yeah. A wet wipe, maybe. Yeah. Uh, and just. It also says ink pads work wonders on the embossing folders, yes. Oh, well done. Well, I didn't know that. I'm glad I bored you with it now, because now I know something I didn't know. Right, so that's that. I can glue that up. Um. You don't really want masses of glue, but I do want to hold this all together because there are certain bits on the edges that would like to fall apart. I don't really want that. I think that's the thing about tracing paper. Maybe it's not quite as substantial. Uh, the candy says to use water-based ink pads. Water-based, yeah. Yeah, and then they wash off otherwise. Uh, yeah, yeah. Use the alcohol ones, it'll stain it. Yeah, yes. so the, any of the distress inks would be fine because they're water-based, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, I guess it still works just as well stained. just won't look as nice. Yeah, if you really, really made a blunder, made a boo-boo. Yeah. But no, it's a good advice. I need a bit of something. I put ink, um, glue right up to the top here. And my back doesn't come that far up, so I'll just wipe that off. Right, so that should be okay. Let's just rub our bone folder just inside there, just to make sure that we have actually not stuck anything to anything that we shouldn't have done. Yeah, that's fine. That's lovely. Grand and dandy. Right, I'm going to fold this over as well. That's still a little bit tacky, but I think we should be okay. So it wants to go from there to there. And just go steady if you're using greaseproof paper. Tracing paper. Tra tracing paper, I'm sorry, guys. Right, so there we are. We have now got a wonky envelope. <laughs> Yeah, I can't keep moving it. Let's see how wonky it is. See how bad I've done. Yeah, I'm about... Oh, no, I can't live with that. That needs to come down to there. I'm risking it. I like living on the edge. There we go. See? Perfectly fine. That should be a bit squarer anyway. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's... Oh, yeah, that's fine. I can live with that. Right, so for our next trick, I'm going to, I'll leave this out and I'll post it on the group, okay? While we're talking about the group, guys, don't forget that we've got this collaborative journal going on in the background. Um, for anybody that's watching that doesn't know what, what I'm talking about, uh, over on the group associated with this uh, YouTube channel, it's called Junk Journal Group. 
um, please pop over. You're more than welcome to join. We have a, we've got a lovely little group over there, I think. Um, but we're doing a collaborative journal. And what I'm asking is for everybody to do um, an A4 page. I must have one. I absolutely must have one. Come on, where did the... You know what I mean? But Where's the flipping thing gone? The actual this <laughs> right by what uh, an A4 page. What I mean is, if you're in America or Australia or whatever, it is the piece of paper that is called photocopy paper. Okay, so it could be 11 by 8, it might be letter size, whatever. Don't worry about it, just this general size. And what I'd like, what I'm asking our group members to do if they want to do it is do the front, the inside, that side, and the back. So it's literally that. There's your A4 piece of paper like that, folded up. So there's that's going to be decorated, and that, and that, and that. And then send it to me, and I'm going to collate them into a um, journal, and then everybody who has joined in, everybody will, their name will go into the hat, as it were, and Siri will pull out a winner. And then whoever wins it will get to keep all of your lovely journal pages. And we're doing quite well. We've got quite a few in so far, uh, but the closing date is the 14th of August. So please make sure that to me before the 14th of August, and then I'll start to put them all together. So you'll find my name and address over on the group in the rack list. Um, if you want to, uh, you know, if you want to private message me for it, that's fine. I've got no problem with that. Um, but I think it'll be a lovely thing to do and a lovely thing in years to come to look back and think, oh, you know, yeah, oh, look, there was Carrier, there was Pat or whatever, you know, how nice. So envelope time to time to mosey along so what i've done because this one's kind of got a yellow thing to it i've put some ribbon all the way around it but i've got this ribbon here which is a kind of greeny color and i really I, this is probably my most favorite color ever it's kind of chartreuse or something like that i don't know something like that um and i and that's what i'm going to put on this one because i think it goes really nicely with with these colors here um, but the first thing I'm going to do is put a little um, piece of ephemera it can be anything um, I quite like these they're out of a field notes ephemera set Tim Holtz one um, someone kindly sent me Hilda thank you very much from my um, Amazon wish list I think that one goes quite nicely on there, that mushroom one. So I'm going to glue that onto there. Itchy nose. My mum used to say if you've got an itchy nose, you're going to have a fight with somebody. I do hope not. I don't like fighting. Well, certainly fist fights. <laughs> I think if you want a fist fight, we'll just call it done. You've won. So pop this on there. It's it's all fungi, and it's it's nice, you know. It's kind of in keeping with this. the The set of a, the ephemera set is called uh, Nature Notes, I think. And it's really lovely. It's got some really useful, nice little bits of die cut in it. Very very useful. Which I know you can die cut yourself from books, etc. But it's nice to have them there ready, isn't it? So the next thing we need to do is put double sided on to stick the ribbon on with. Glory, come on. Can anybody see it? Can you tell me where it is? What is now? Double sided again. I think it's because it's so small these days. Which one's the big one? Yeah. Where is it? 
Oh, here it is. Look, it's because it's minuscule. So I want to go in the center of there. So I'm just going to open that up again. Go in the center. It might be slightly skewed that, but never mind. You get the idea. like so and then over the back like so and then right round to meet that one it looks best if they do meet up so try and get them to meet yeah I'm on the, well on the wonk here not for the first time in my life that I'm on the wonk so that goes to there Whoever gets this as a rack, I apologise. The tarp's got mistakes and that was meant to go right up to there as well. <laughs> so that goes right up to the back. Right, okay. So that's, you know, what you've got to do. I think it's that one actually that's going off that way. I wonder if you can get it off there. Oh, not without tearing it. Stick it back down quick. Right, so let's take that off there, put our ribbon down. Jaunty angle. It is a jaunty angle, I know it's really off. I'm gonna to have to live with it though because I can't get it off. You won't. <gasps> So take that off. Sorry about this being at such a jaunty angle. I'm sure it, it, it's offending you, it's offending me. You can probably straighten a lot of it out with the actual ribbon. Yeah. I think you'll get away with it. Yeah, it's stuck to me. So, let's make a start on the... I'm going to have to hold it in a certain way to see the light. There. Put that down there, right. Okay, so pull that straight down there. Okay, that's not so bad. It's not brilliant, but it's not so bad. And then up to meet up with that bit. That's not so bad. This bit's stuck to the back, for heaven's sake. Oh, come on. What, what, what's your problem? <laughs> no, there has to be an answer. I think you can see my scalpel's like not ultra sharp here. So that's stuck to the double-sided. Of course it has. I mean, that's its purpose. Right. Okay, so I need another bit of double-sided there. Um, making a bit of a mountain at Molehill here, to be honest with you. But never mind. I mean, that, these things happen, don't they? They don't just happen to me, I'm sure. Please tell me they don't just happen to me. It wouldn't be a real live if everything just went boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Right, so I'm cutting that off. That's as good as I can get that. That's coming down. It matches pretty well, actually. I can cut that furry bit off there and then what I'm going to do is put a little bit of icing sugar onto that just to absorb, stick onto the um, double sided because otherwise it's going to catch everything that will end up dirty. I don't know how it manages to find dirt but it does. 
So just a little bit of icing sugar onto there. It doesn't take much, just take the stickiness off it, that's all. So that's a good tip whenever you've got double-sided where you don't want double-sided. Just put a bit of icing sugar on and it, it just disappears, you know, eventually it's just not there. But it takes the stick off it for the... So there we are. Right, so that's that. I need to just shut the hole off otherwise I'll end it up with clouds of icing sugar. Um, right, so that's that. So I then put some uh, die cuts on it. Um, and I've laid some out here, but I've laid pink out. I don't know. If, I don't know if pink's what I want really, particularly. I think yellow might look quite nice. I've got bright yellow. That's quite a nice colour. Um, I haven't got a green that's the same as the ribbon, but that's quite nice. What do you think, guys? What do you think, guys? Tell me, please. I think the pink, I don't know. Glory. We're back to I don't know again. I quite like that. I quite like that pink with that green, actually. I quite like this. These are um, Sizzix die cuts, Tim Holtz die cuts. Um, and they're called Wildflowers. I've actually got two sets. Um, I was generally generously donated one set. Thank you. They're thinlets, aren't they? Yeah, they're thinlets. I'm just wondering if I could intermingle those and make them look like they're sort of growing together a bit more natural. <laughs> bits of paper cut out of paper and I'm trying to make it look natural <laughs> it just, I just don't know how blooming ridiculous that's so <laughs> anyway <laughs> pressing ever forward I quite like that and ultimately I think I'm going to put that bow at the bottom is any, everybody alright with that? I think the green looks lovely Pat, excellent my goodness me Fiona you really have a head full of knowledge <laughs> Full of something, Pat. Um, Hilda, I'm not so sure it's knowledge. Um, Hilda, pink. Yeah, let's do it then. Let's go. Let's go. So I am going to um, I don't think I, I can't work out how to glue it and intermingle at the same time. No, just uh... <laughs> It's the wrong end of a live to be trying to do that. Thank you for my brew. It's really nice. You're welcome. So I'd just like to say thank you to all the ladies who send out racks to people. It's really kind of you. Um, it, you know, it, it's not mandatory at all in, in our group, but I know that some of you do it. And I speak from personal experience when I say when you receive one, it's just... It, oh, it makes it makes you well it makes me cry i'm a bit like that i'm a bit of a cry baby um but just to think that somebody's put all that time and effort into making something for just for you it's amazing i'll tell you i've got my little card from carrie sat on my desk right there looking at me um and it makes me smile it makes me happy Right, let's go for this then and see what happens. You can, because these are so thin, you can sort of um, twist them round. You don't have to go straight up and down. Manipulate. Manipulate, yeah. Yeah, you can manipulate. I'm going to manipulate that off. Actually, right there. And I think this bit's missed the glue. So I need my glue bottles filled up for tomorrow, Mr. F, please. 
I'll do it and video it. Oh yeah, do it and video it, that's right. Right, so we've got that. So I'm going to add this as well because it's kind of like that sort of chartreuse colour that was on about. It's a bit long, so I'll chop that off. That bit, however, could be useful um, now or later in my life. <laughs> Sad am I. <laughs> What are people saying? What's anybody got to say? Are they not talking? Yes, um, Regina says she's listening, but she's working on a Sunflower Thoughts journal book cover. Ah, well, you've got something nice to go on the front uh, of that, haven't you? says she loves, love, love the tracing paper trick. Yeah, much cheaper, eh? And you can have, you, you know, whatever design you want on it. I'm quite in love with it, actually, the, the um, tracing paper trick. <laughs> you have to hand it with care, because it can go brittle. Yeah, it can go brittle. But, you know, it's worth it. So there we are. That's that stuck down. And I think that's all that needs, you know, to be honest. I don't think it needs any more than that. I have on this one put a butterfly, but it's a bit like butterfly overload really. So I think that um, I think that's all right there. Oh, for heaven's sake, come on. So yeah, just to reiterate, if you like what you see here <laughs> i don't know why but if you do um we have a group associated with this uh, youtube channel in, on facebook and it's called um junk journal group so it's easy to remember junk journal group you're all very very welcome to join we're a friendly lot we're a supportive lot um so pop over there and join up we are doing a collaborative journal at the moment where people if they want if they choose to of course um are, are sending me um pages that i will collate into a junk journal that someone one of the people who've collaborated will will get to keep forever uh, which is lovely i don't know why that's not sticking to there maybe i didn't put enough glue on I'm going to Fabri-Tech it. fabri -tech. That'll get it to stick. Oops. Um, beyond that, I don't think there's any housekeeping that I have to tell you about. Nothing much going on. Really. So yeah, there we go. So what have we achieved? <laughs> That's such a good question. What have we achieved? Well, look, we've achieved that. And we've achieved the envelope to go in it. And it's a bit sturdier, this one, um, than the one I'd made earlier. This one. So that has that in. And I must say, as all of you will know, I'm sure, Purple and yellow go very well together. You know, nature got it right in spring when there's all those beautiful irises around, crocuses and everything, and they're purple and yellow. And it's a combination that is a winning combination. So, you know, it's worth remembering in your, in your journals uh, combinations that really work. They're, they're complementary colours and they work well. Um, so all we've got to do tomorrow is um, the other bits that go in there, which one of them is this, which I'm really going to get, I'm going to get everything sorted tonight so I can really whiz through that. Um, so I'll do that. I might do it in a lilac-y colour, more lilac-y colour. I don't know, quite like the pink though. And the other thing that goes in there is that tag, the double sort of tag. 
um, but I've no idea what happened to that. It's a good job I had a tidy up before um, before uh, live, isn't it? Otherwise I won't find anything. Oh, oh, no. I don't know where it is, but I showed it to you at the beginning. It's like a double tag, and we'll be doing that tomorrow. Oh, a swing tag. Yeah, like a swing tag on a brad. Gone far, you'd have in the um, rack that Carrie sent me, there was these two little royal bags, and I've taken out what was inside it, and I really fancy using them for something. So yeah, like I say, watch this space. Um, Mr. Fix it's frantically looking for my tag, which is now just lost, it's left the face of the earth completely. I don't know. Anyway, that's a problem for tomorrow. I'll find that for then. So that we're, tomorrow we definitely are doing this. Definitely, definitely. And we definitely are doing that swing tag. Then maybe we can move on to... Ah, he's found it. The swing tag. There we go. It's on a brad. It swings out. It swings all the way around if you're really feeling daring. Um, butterfly, ribbon, brad, back in. There you go. So that's the two things for tomorrow. And they'll all fit into that pocket, this pocket actually. And um, Bob's your uncle. <laughs> Bob really is my uncle though, really. He was married to my Auntie Margaret. Okay, uh, thank you so much for your company, everybody. I'm sorry it, we haven't maybe got through as much as I would have liked to. But uh, everything takes time, doesn't it? That's the thing. So. Not that I'm encouraging anybody to spend money. And I know that we're not all in a position where we can spend money on, on paper. And that's fine. Use what you've got. But if you can, I would rec I'd certainly recommend those chapter one papers. The it's This one's called Wildflower Moments. And I love it. I think it's six or eight. I can't remember. Of the collage sheets. And then there's two sheets extra. One's got the this sort of thing and the other's got this sort of thing so the it's lovely they're lovely pages and i like i say i've printed mine out on white you could print yours out on coffee stand and you get a more shabby sort of look so guys thank you thank you thank you thank you hilda says thank you very much again for sharing with us oh thank you corin <laughs> yeah i saw the tags i know they exist i know they do Oh dear. I think you should keep the first collaborative journal, Fiona. Uh, oh, that's lovely, Miranda. That would be lovely. I'd be delighted. Uh, Pat, thank you. Sammy, Corin, Natalie, Miranda, Roz. Hi, Roz. I didn't say hello to you earlier. Uh, two o'clock tomorrow. Don't be late. If they can't post the. Yes, Mr. Fix, it's right. If you can't post your entry for the collaborative journal, um, I know a couple of you can't because you're um, stuck in and you can't get out at all for various reasons, then consider taking photographs um, and emailing them to me. We will do our best, you know, if you've got flips or anything like this, if you take photographs of it in various positions, we will do our best to print it all out and assemble it for you. Um, hopefully, you know, it won't be as good as yours, but it'll it'll be a contribution. Because I'd love all the members to contribute if they could. I really would. And don't sit there at home thinking, well, I'm not going to contribute because I'm not very good. That's just rubbish. You've seen today. I mean, everybody makes mistakes. I'm not saying I'm great and I make mistakes. Just that everybody does. So don't feel like that. There's no need to feel like that. We're, 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 we're an inclusive group, you know. Um, just the only rule is that it has to include either birds and or butterflies that's it that's all after that it's up to you any color any style any theme any whatever you know if you want to do edgar Allan poe's the raven that's right that's fine if you want to do i don't know angry birds or whatever whatever it is star wars <laughs> star wars yeah <laughs> so i'll see you tomorrow at two o'clock i will be super organized but i thought i was today um 
and we'll try and whistle through some of this. All right. Thanks for joining me. See you tomorrow. Bye.